Ah, uh, yes, uh, life is very busy. This is Hayden Quinn here from the very popular band Big Reef. Uh, Apologising for not having posted a new podcast in a while. It's been it's been busy. I'll put it that way. Um, I'd like to quickly present to you another sort of half an episode of the Snail Year podcast. As you may recall, we're going through every episode of the Snail Year podcast, a short-lived podcast from 2019 that Morgan put together with lots of very funny sketches. Um, if you'd like to hear the full episode, you can go to our Patreon. Big Reef, no, hang on, what is it? It's at patreon.com forward slash Big Reef, and you can pay like $8 a month there to get full access to all of our previous episodes, including full interviews with guests, full episodes of just Morgan and I talking uh, philosophy, music, um, uh, diet? Sure, why not? Uh, so head over there to get that. You also get all, uh, uh, so many other things. Like cheap or free tickets to Big Reef shows. Um, i got to figure this out yet, but we've got a show coming up in Sydney on the 19th of October. It's going to be fucking great. It's with Rat Boy School Excursion, fantastic band from up there. Always a pleasure to play with them. And a band called The Honey Giant's Heart, which is very, very heartfelt, beautiful uh, folk music. Sometimes they pull out, I think, like a nine or ten piece band, so that should be grouse. That's at the Botany View Hotel. And I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm sure that if you're a paying patron, uh, or paying Patreon member, you'll get free entry or at least discounted tickets to that. So why not subscribe now? Hey, uh, what else happened? We put out the MVP, our new single, and by all accounts, it's streaming. Go have a listen to that. Um, really, really appreciate some of the feedback we're getting. The, the YouTube algorithm pushed that music video out to some, what we in the biz call, <laughs> randos. And we got some really nice comments from them. Um, so if you can do anything uh, to, to assist that algorithm to push it out to more <laughs> randos, that'd be really cool because... Um, uh, as as it is stated and as it has been passed down from generation to generation, it is imperative that more people listen to Big Reef. And um, anything you can do to serve that mantra would be not only greatly appreciated, but I feel like it is sort of your responsibility to, um, to do that. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. You can listen to the actual podcast. Thanks so much. And don't cry. What is a B? C D? Can we, can have we, you ever heard of a pie? <laughs> All you have to say in retaliation is two words. Thanks everyone. host and my name is I've received a few letters from my fans so I thought I'd read them out <clears throat> dear host I've listened to every episode of snail yeah and I've got to admit I am a huge man who thinks that you are not funny what I would like to wrestle you into submission and feed you to my crocodile he is named Alistair you deserve nothing but the most painful of deaths <sighs> What's this last part? Hope you are well, big boy Barry. Well, not everybody's going to like everything you do. <laughs> I'm sure the next letter will be much more supportive. Fuck face. <gasps> Stop what you are doing. It has no value. You don't have a funny bone in your body and everything that you have created so far suggests serious mental illness. My thoughts and prayers for anyone who has to endure you on a regular basis. I want you to know that you deserve nothing but the most painful of deaths. <laughs> What's this last part? Hope the weather's not treating you too bad there in Canberra. Sincerely, Psychopath Steve. Well, they can't all be bad. Best of five. I'm going to get you and hurt you. <laughs> Drown yourself, maggot. <laughs> Thank you for your donation to the SES. <laughs> Okay, it's all right. It's just feedback. All right, what can we do? Um, okay, let me ask my magic eight ball. 
People have decided that I'm not funny and they want me dead. Steer me true, Magic 8-Ball. What should I do? Get a sidekick. You mean like another human? Not necessarily. You were right about vaccinations. You're probably right about this. Have I ever steered you wrong? Let's go find a sidekick. Please stop shaking me. I look around the flat sometimes and I just think, how did I get myself into this mess? No furniture, no TV. It's just bloody drills everywhere you look. In the bathroom, bedroom, on the balcony, as far as the eye can see, they're all over the shop, these drills. I think the final straw for Sharon was um, her baby shower for my grandson. I said, look, Sharon, you and Mark, you've got enough on your plates. Don't worry about dessert. I'll make a big trifle. I'll bring it over. Everyone will love it. She said, yeah, all right. Thanks, Dad. That'd be great. Anyways, I'll get in the kitchen, go over the fridge, and there's nothing there. And that's what I remember. I never owned a fridge. It's just a bloody drill lying on the floor where the fridge should be. It's always just been drills, 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 drills with me. And now I'm paying the price. Cut to a week later, I'm at Mark and Sharon's. Everyone's there, we've all had a great feed. I noticed some eyes go to me, you know? People are expecting me to pipe up with something. Then I remember, that's right, I was meant to bring a bloody trifle. Mark asked me, hey, Glenny, you got that trifle? Mark's got a bit of a sweet tooth, he's like me. I say, oh, yeah, 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 Mark, yeah, yeah, just give us a minute, it's out, it's out the front. I left it in the car. So I go out the front, get to my car, that's when I realised I don't have a bloody car. I look down, it's just a bloody drill. There's always just been bloody drills with me, all the time. All drills, all the time. And now I'm finally paying the price. So I go back into the backyard. Everybody's looking at me. I look at Sharon's face and she already knows. I can't even look her in the eye. She goes, Dad, is that a drill? I say, no. What's that in your hand? Oh, it's just a trifle. She goes, no. No, it's not. That's a drill. No, it's not a drill. It's not a drill. She said, show me what it is. Quit hiding it behind your back. Be honest. Is it a drill? I put it down on the table and it, yeah, it's a drill. There's no denying it. It was a drill. I say, look, cards on the table, love. I didn't make a trifle. I've got this drill. She looks at me. She looks at the drill. She says, you are not my father anymore. I was like, please, 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 Sharon, don't say that to me. She said, no, it's your last chance. The amount of times I've invited you over for a barbecue and you've promised, promised to bring me a trifle and you've shown up with a bloody drill, I can't even count the amount of times that that's happened. But it's freakish and it's unusual. You've got to go home now to your drills. I say, well, hang on, Dale, Sharon, look, there's a reason behind all this, you know? Drills are special. You can do all sorts of things with them. You can fix anything with a drill. And she says, drills can fix a lot of things, Dad. That's true. But there's one thing that drills can never fix. That's the way I feel about you. I said, you want to bet? And I pulled out my drill and started drilling it. And I, and I drilled it right everywhere. I haven't spoken to Sharon since. That's just life, you know. You regret some of those things that you do when you're younger. Like collecting drills or having kids. Hey, thanks for coming in, Andy. I'm really grateful that you could make it. All right. Look, I don't know how much Magic 8-Ball has told you about this position, but basically I run a comedy podcast and I'm looking for a new sidekick. I thought you'd be perfect for it. A sidekick? That's right. You know, in some ways, I I feel like I was uh, tailor made for, for the this job position. Yeah, because you know, I say smart Alec crap to people all the time. Like, yeah, that's great, but I'm really just looking for somebody who will make me look a lot funnier. I'd climb all over you all night. Okay, I don't know how that's going to help, but I am a genius. Uh, I, all right, uh, Andy, have you had a chance to listen to the podcast? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and what did you think? It's a little sexist. It's a little ageist. Yeah, I guess in parts. Do you have any suggestions? You need a name. Yeah, it's called Snail Yeah. Have, have you actually listened to it, Andy? Uh, yeah. You know what, Andy? I don't think you've listened to one single second of my podcast. Slap me and then flatter me. Okay, what sort of slap do you want? Just a sideways slap. Mm, all right.
You have a warm smile. I can take insults, but flirting uh, terrifies me. Let's move on. Andy, have you ever done any sidekick work before? I was uh, I was the star of three different sitcoms. Mm -hmm. And on those sitcoms, were you playing a sidekick character? Yes, like you, exactly. Yeah. No, 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 not not like me. No, I'm the host, and I'm looking for a sidekick. Have you ever done anything like that? I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you understand what you're doing here today? Do, are you aware of what this is? No, it was not my idea. Uh, I don't. I actually don't know whose idea it, it was. It was my Magic 8-Ball's idea, Andy. Wow. That's whose idea it was for you to come here today, Andy. I was very excited oh, because really? I know that you've been Conan O'Brien's sidekick for decades. Look, how do you even know Magic 8-Ball? We hooked up in July. In July. At it was Junior's uh, Deli. Junior's Deli. Right. We hit it off. I mean, we just kind of basically uh, went out drinking and driving a lot. Yes. What are you talking? Why would you do that? It really wasn't a big deal. People are way more upset about it than I was. Exactly. It's probably because you were drunk. Oh, I don't think no. so. You just said that you were drink driving. Uh, well, and not just me, our entire show. Yeah. Okay, I think I've heard enough, Andy. Thank you so much for coming in today. We'll be in touch. Uh... Um, what, what, what is he doing? When um, Andy is overwhelmed, uh, he starts saying um and ah a lot. Uh, Can we make it stop? It's uh, really weird behavior. Um, the only way uh, to end the conversation um, with Andy Richter is to uh, throw to a commercial. We don't have um, any sponsors. He doesn't need to know uh, that. Look, huh? just make it seem organic uh, and everything will be um, just fine. Otherwise, um, he may <sighs> never leave. Okay. Uh, so, Andy. Hey. Hey, Andy. Uh, over here, I got a question for you, Andy. Andy. Oh boy. Right. So, do you have anything that you're promoting at the moment? No. Uh, okay. Um, what about funny stories from the set of Conan? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think of satellite phones? A satellite phone? Uh huh. Eh, pretty what you see is what you get. Tell me, Andy, what's your New Year's resolution? No more making fun of myself. Andy, what are your two biggest fears? Sports trivia. Life hacks. I can never remember. Is it swine first or is it pearls? Pearls before swine. And how do you think it's all going to end for you? Uh, actually, the thing that would kill me would be sports trivia. Oh, okay. And what's your biggest secret? We actually, we had a secret dinner. Ooh, go into more detail about that. I flew out to have a secret dinner. Yeah. Can you tell me anything about this dinner or are you just going to repeat yourself for the third time? Things come in threes. Yeah, like, like three, three strikes. strikes. Jinx. Andy, tell me something that you used to have that you wish you still had. I had a friend. I heard she died. No. On the needle, she was crucified, baby. <laughs> that was years ago. <laughs> I don't think you can get away with that anymore. Oh, no. Jimmy Barnes would probably sue me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm glad somebody thinks so. Look, Andy, thank you so much. We're out of time, yeah, but we yeah. are going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Oh, good. Stay tuned. Andy, that was great. Thanks so much for coming on. I did well, yeah. Now, are you going to be right to get back to the studio on time? Uh, rehearsal starts at 1. Okay, we'll call you an Uber. Look, forget it. Oh, you don't want them to know it's you. What name do you want me to put it under? Jana McCracken. Done. All right, any parting words? I would say I'm very dependent on flushable wipes. Okay, thanks, Andy. I'm Richard Dawkins, and for the last 40 years, I've dedicated my life to debunking religious myths and proving once and for all that science is the one true reasonable force. And now I'm selling bloody doors! Get down to Richard's Door King! I've got big doors, I've got small doors, I'm updating my showroom and all floor stock must go! Up to 60% off, everything must go! French doors, save, save, save! Yeah. Internal doors as low as $25, plus much more! The best buys will go first! For a free measuring quote now, visit Richard's Door King anytime from 9am to 9pm. I'm there all the time. Come on, don't be selfish, Gene. Get down! Down to Richard's Door King! Everybody Loves Raymond is one of the most successful sitcoms of all time. It was a ratings juggernaut for CBS, has generated six international spin-offs, and catapulted the careers of several members of the cast. But as with any Hollywood success story, there's always a darker side to the glitch and glamour. These are the secrets that one of America's favorite families tried to hide. Number 10. Ray Romano shits his pants. It was a well-known fact that on set of Everybody Loves Raymond, Ray Romano, the big boy himself, would not go on set unless somebody else took a steaming dump in his trousers before filming. <laughs> Looks like somebody had a bit too much spaghetti. Somebody killed me. <laughs> Number nine.
Brad Garrett shits his pants. The actor who played Robert Barone, Ray's brother, is well known for being a very tall man. But did you know there's always a darker side to the glitch and glamour? Brad Garrett is reported as targeting one particular member of the crew and demanding that they shit in his pants before, during, and after filming his scenes. Mmm, just like Mama used to make. <laughs> I forgot where I live! <laughs> Number eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Everybody on that show was shitting in each other's pants all of the time. Okay, goodbye. The Saints are still marching in. <laughs> Cheer up. We'll try again tomorrow. Honestly, Magic 8-Ball, I'm ready to throw the towel. As you're listening to the free feed uh, of our podcast, this is the episode fading out. If you want to hear the full thing, please go to patreon.com forward slash big reef and pay us a little bit of money to get access to all of our previous podcasts. This one as well, the whole the whole damn thing. And um, yeah, I, th- I think I think it's going to be a fun time for you. So head over there. Thank you. Bye.